Hello, my friends, it's Krebsy here. We're going to be playing a bit of War Thunder. Uh, this is going to be kind of strange for me doing this episode, and it's not strange for you at all. Un until now, until Krebsy's starting to make it awkward. What? what? What's wrong, Krebs? What's wrong? Tell us. We can listen to you. No, shut up. Kill some planes. No, I I I'm moving house, guys, okay? Uh, I, I need to make a what's happening with Krebs so I, I can get out a message to all of you so you all know what is going on because chances are people watch me for War Thunder, people watch me for my company of heroes, people watch me for World of Tanks and blah, blah, blah. Uh, so I need to get a what's happening out so everyone can know what is happening with Krebs. Um, I'm moving house, guys, at the moment, and I don't have my proper computer here. In fact, I'm using my flatmate's computer at the moment until I move to my new... Um, flat, my apartment, they call it a flat here in the UK, it's a bit silly, but whatever. Um, and, and, and I'm not gonna have any sort of proper way of doing videos for probably the next two weeks. I, I mean, I'm not gonna have my proper computer until I get down to where my brother is, and then after that, once I move to my new house, then I'm not probably gonna have proper internet, so it's gonna take in total maybe like two weeks until I actually move down somewhere, and then also get the internet going, and you know, it, it, it will come together, but for the meantime, um, you have to probably suffer a bit. You might have to realize that I'm gonna have erratic uh, video schedules. Like, for example, I know that the War Thunder dev server has come out. Like, what are the freaking chances? I've been waiting for the dev server so long. Literally, I've been logging into the dev server near enough every single day for the last month. And lo and behold, the two days where I don't have computer access, uh, when I'm moving my stuff out of my room, that is when the dev server comes up. So, I, I need to get a video out on that sometime soon. Uh, you guys keep on messaging me here all the time. Like, Krebs, what do you think of the new uh, planes? <laughs> to be honest, I've barely even seen them. I've seen some, you know, videos, pictures, just some weird-ass stuff. I, I didn't take an in-depth look at it. And, and uh, I think the only time that I'm actually going to take a look at it, I don't want to spoil it for myself, but... I don't want to watch like other people's videos. I want to see it for myself in, in the actual dev server and then speak about it to you guys. Uh, but it really depends. I don't know when the dev server is coming up. And people will say like, you know, look at the Russian forums. I, I can't speak Russian. If one of you can uh, link me to the exact place where they post the times that they're going to open up the dev server, I'd be really, really appreciative of that. Uh, but otherwise, I'm going to have to log in random times of the day and hope that... Uh, I can I can get on uh, and do some videos about it for you guys, but for the meantime, I thought what we would be doing in this episode is continuing off that last video. I think you guys really really liked it. I know some people were <laughs> okay. The last video was how I kill planes, and uh, then we had the grammar Nazis at first saying, "Oh, Krebs, it's not you killing planes. It's an animate object. What you do is you destroy planes. You kill the pilots." God damn it! I know, but like. <laughs> that doesn't really matter that much. Grammar Nazis, whatever. Then you have pronunciation Nazis, you know, like the World of Tanks, Luva. The Luva. You know, there's al always be a pronunciation Nazi. Um, I had a whole comment war going on in that video about people disagreeing with some of the stuff that I was saying. And like, <laughs> I don't know, I'm okay with people disagreeing with me, but please don't point out the nominal stuff like the stuff that doesn't even matter i make a whole video about how to play better at the game how to just in general like you know how i play and then people are like grabs you ram that guy it's like fair enough okay i did ram him but it wasn't on purpose he just flew in front of me so what what, what can i do just uh, suddenly ufo style do a complete 180 no, i can't not even a japanese plane could do that but uh anyway so i thought what we would continue on with uh is a few questions that some of you guys uh, gave me in the last episode um, in the comment box like you know Krebs I've been trying out some of the advice you were giving me I still can't manage to do these sharp turns I think hold on where is this one guy who's speaking about it just now here we go uh, greater 73 says hey sorry to bother you I'm a big fan of your videos TY uh, can I ask you a quick question what am I doing wrong when I try to do your S uh, Q move plane seems to just freeze up and doesn't turn as quick as if I pull my mouse E mouse to the left okay um and i tried to explain it to him and and i guess there's only so much that you can do to explain i think what would be so much better is if we actually get on into uh what do you call it 
an actual not we won't go into a battle straight away we will get into battles but i want to go into some test flights uh and i and actually show you guys something like that oh and here we go here we have uh the balanced nazis so in the last episode we had pronunciation nazis grammar nazis we had comment war nazis now we also had uh balanced nazis some guy was saying someone said uh krebs is so lame you're not using using ussr planes because uh you say the other people think they're lame okay if that is lame then you know what guys we're gonna do the ussr this episode uh i'm gonna fly out as a test flight in my yak 9 troll and we're gonna uh yeah just the test flight arcade battles this is all arcade battles that we're doing at the moment i'll do historical battles in the future uh i'm still not expertly skilled but whatever uh and i'll show you guys how i do these you know turns and, and stuff like that uh, I do want to mention actually, and this is actually a really interesting point. I want to give out like lots of tips as much as I can, you know, more tips than I did in the last episode. One of the biggest things that I noticed, okay, when I first came onto my flatmate's computer, and before we get off on the ground, I want to explain this. Before I uh, was do am doing this video, I was using my flatmate's computer, and his computer is normally pretty bad, okay. His processor good, but his graphics card is a GTX 560, okay. He can only run the game smoothly on the lowest graphics, all right? And I was like, man, I'm going to have to make an episode of this graphics. People are going to be absolutely hating it. Uh, so I tried out going into an arcade battle, and it was atrocious, okay? <laughs> One of the biggest changes I noticed in, to, in improving skill is actually just not limiting yourself with graphics, okay? Okay. When I was in that low graphic game, I couldn't barely even tell where the freaking runaway was. I couldn't even land on on a runaway properly and do you know the Krebs landing style. Uh, it was so hard to track down enemies because the anti the anti aliasing was so bad. It was just like a jagged line, then they would disappear. It was so bad, uh, and and I was like, okay, I've got my computer packed up beside me. It's meant to be picked up at Parse of Force and being taken down to Southampton. But you know what? I I cut that bastard open. I took out my my uh, GTX 680. I put it into uh, Jack's bad computer, and here we have good graphics again. Um, so my computer is going to be sent down soon. But most importantly, I've got the highest graphics running, um, about 74 frames with recording at the moment, and this is how I like playing the game. Uh, and, and I would recommend it. Like if, if there you go. That th if there was a pay to win in this game, this would be pay to win. You have to pay to get a fucking graphics card, <laughs> and not be limited by uh, your graphics. Okay, so uh, I would highly recommend getting something that's acceptable. Okay, you don't have to be on the highest possible graphics. I've played the game on medium settings; those are fine. But, I mean, when you're lacking anti-aliasing, when you're lacking shadows, I think it really starts to kill your performance uh, in, in the game. At least that's why I felt, okay? I, I played a few games, and, and I just couldn't do it. It just it didn't, didn't happen, okay? Uh, so, I should also mention I'm using a different keyboard and also mouse. It's not a gaming keyboard or a mouse, so don't mind if I'm, you know, clicking loads. You can probably hear that click. Uh, and for some reason I'm being rearmed. Oh, because I'm landed. Uh, so what we'll do right now is we'll go ahead and take off. And we'll get on into the sky. And I'll show you guys some of these turns over here. So I'm just using my takeoff flaps, pressing F. And getting my gears up as soon as I take off uh, with G. And now I'll switch on over my flaps to raised with F because I've taken off. Uh, you're just using those takeoff flaps to literally take off. It just uh, decreases the amount of runway that you need to actually get off the ground. Alright, so we're just flying over this uh, beautiful place near Krushne Okaber. <laughs> I'm totally saying that wrong. But, uh, okay, so let's just go in a straight line. Now, let's start off nice and simple. Uh, a while ago, and I mean like a while ago, like four or five months ago, I made a video about my controls. I even had my webcam showing you guys my keyboard, and I'd highly recommend checking that video out as well, uh, how I do these turns. But for the sake of actually, you know, you're watching this video right now, let's go ahead and do these turns, okay? So I imagine what most people do is they do this, okay? Say if you want to turn to the left, they turn on the side, and then they follow through with not only their mouse, but also by holding S, which uh, makes them pull back, essentially, on the plane, okay? Which is fair enough, that's just your very standard, uh, you know, turn, 
okay but it's not the most efficient turn that's not how krebs turns um now let's let's break it down even further okay so you have that sort of turn now it's also possible to turn with your rudder in arcade battle so if we press say if we want to go to the left we press q with our rudder and if we keep on holding that rudder down, eventually we're just going to keep on turning, turning, turning. Obviously we're losing altitude at the same time, but that's because we're not pulling on S to uh, bring us back up. So now I'm pulling on S and my Q to gain some altitude um, and also turn at the same time, okay? Whereas if I was just doing Q, look, see, I'm losing altitude quite rapidly, all right? Uh, so... When, I, when I'm trying to do the sharper turns, uh, what I'll do is I'll use that S and Q at the same time to try and maintain as much altitude as possible. I'm still going to be losing it, but I'm trying to maintain as much as possible. Also, powering through with the uh, throttle at the same time. Shit, I've got uh, sticky keys. <laughs> My bad. Uh, hopefully that doesn't affect you guys. I thought I turned that shit off. Okay, sorry. Uh, <clears throat> right. So, we have our... Also, I, I, we have the WEP, and uh, the WEP allows us to just power on, okay? Uh, it, it, I, I always do it whenever I'm turning, whether I'm just doing a simple turn, which I almost never do, or one of these more complex turns. I always almost have my uh, throttle going on WEP. It's wartime emergency power, okay? Uh, you can't use it forever in arcade battles because eventually the throttle will cut and uh, your engine will cut and it, you know chokes essentially <laughs> you, you, You'll hear it obviously. I'm sure you guys have done it many times and that puts you in a very vulnerable position because then you don't have the power to sometimes get outside of uh, Desperate situations, so I just use it when I need to all right Okay, so now that we have these uh, two different turns established uh, what I'd like to do is say if, if we want to turn uh, left again the Krebsy way okay so what I'll do is I'll do S and Q at the same time and then I'll also be leading with my mouse okay so as you can see I'm leading with my mouse over to that uh, where my target's gonna be okay now I think all the mouse does is it just adjusts with your rudder see if you move your mouse left and right it just moves your rudder slightly uh, but I feel, and you know, uh, don't don't hold me for it. I don't know if the mouse actually makes a difference along with holding the rudder at the same time. But I feel if you do Q and S, uh, and move your mouse at the same time, I, I feel like that makes a bigger difference than just doing Q and S uh, alone. It, it allows you not only to uh, potentially maybe move easier, but it allows you to see your target where you want to try to go to. And so you can accordingly adjust, okay? So it's just good practice. Make sure that you're leading with your mouse. I'm sure a lot of you are doing that already, okay? Um, as you can see, what happens sometimes when I'm trying to use my QNS, I'm losing altitude, okay? Uh, what I'll usually do to counteract that is simply by using D, okay? D is to bring my right flap, what is that, down? Or my right flap up, my left flap down. And that makes me counteract that effect of heading downwards, okay? So that I'm still, essentially, I'm going upwards. Uh, see, I'm gaining altitude and using my rudder. Normally, if I was just doing this, I'd be losing altitude using Q and S. I'd be losing altitude. But now that I'm using D, I'm counteracting that uh, potential to lose um, altitude. And in fact, I'm actually gaining altitude, but turning at the same time, okay? Uh, notice how I'm not using WEP. If I was actually trying to get on a target, I'd be powering through it all at the same time. All at the same time. Right on through. Right on through. Until I came to the top of my turn, and I have gravity as my advantage and my target is below me, then I probably won't use the WEP. I'll just let gravity take me down to the ground. I might even cut back my throttle, just so that I don't overtake my enemy. And then I'll just unleash right into him. So, you know, it's, it's I don't know, I, I feel like it's it's not that difficult. Once you just practice it a little bit in in these test flights, you can do it with any plane. Uh, you, you'll get a hang of it really, really quickly. Uh, using that Q and also your turns. If you need to gain altitude, make sure you're using D. If you don't, then just use Q and S and you'll fall down. Um, but there are a multitude of different, you know, ways to approach these turns. Uh, that is just your basic in a way complex 
a turn that I like to do. There are things that you can do to incorporate maneuvers into it that improves your flying, but I honestly don't think we should go over the you know maneuvers because there are so many maneuvers to go over that it'd just be insane to do it all in one episode. Um, so I don't think there's a point of actually going ahead and do that. Like you know, for example, gaining altitude you know, a high yo-yo and then falling down on your opponent, you know, once you have lost blood a lot of speed and then using your gravity to come back on top of him. You, you know, stuff like that. There's no point in doing it right now. Um, but a lot of times that actually happens in, in actual battles. Now, what we're going to do is go back to the hangar and we'll go out into a battle. If you want to really find out about those maneuvers like high yo-yos and stuff, it is as simple as going on Wikipedia and looking them up. Uh, there are some great shows I can recommend, like Dogfights, amazing show for maneuvers. Uh, you have to watch quite a bit of hours uh, for it. You could check out my videos. I've done a few dogfighting maneuvers. If you look it up on my channel, just, you know, dogfighting maneuvers with Krebs or something like that, you'll find something. Uh, I've done enough, uh, maybe two or three. Uh, apart from that, mm, read some books or just watch my gameplay. Just take a look at what I'm doing. That's one of the best ways to learn. Look at how many messages I get from you guys. Jeez, oh, jeez, oh. You know that the dev server is on, or is it closed? Uh, well, if it's on right now, then I'd be kind of worried, because I really want to do an episode. But anyway, guys, since uh, there's a few people that like to bitch about the USSR and... Oh, Krebs, that's lame that you're not using them. I think we'll go out into them. I mean, I wasn't going to forget about them forever. It was just uh, that episode. Jeez. People getting their knickers in a twist. A lot of people on the... A lot of girls on their period. <laughs> Uh, okay, right, so what I'm gonna do, uh, another one of you were saying that I should try doing some lower tier planes, alright? So that's exactly what I'm gonna try to do. I'm gonna try to go for tier 8 and below. For some reason, this operation is taking a long time to go with. Processing operation! How long does this take to process? Well... I, I don't know what's going on. But, uh, I'm gonna replace all of my high tier planes with lower tier ones. Right, I need to figure this one out. Okay, sorry about that guys, uh, I think it was a, a, <laughs> an issue with my internet, so... Yeah, I'll switch out all my higher tier planes for lower tier ones. Let's just sort this one out. Okay, go away. We'll add... What the heck is this? <laughs> it's because I'm using my, uh, flatmate's computer and he's got all these weird settings. Uh, yak 3, go away. Oh, why does it do that? It's like if you go scroll too much, it automatically selects some weird plane for some reason. LA5 fan, you can go as well. Take out the SU, because that's the last plane that I have on it. LA7B, you can go away as well. I will take the Yak, because the Peshka can't be bothered with that at the moment. Era Cobra, I used it so much that I've actually mastered it. That sucks. Man. I uh, will go for, with the MIG. And to top it off, we'll get the IL-2, okay? So, I mean, I already showed you guys my, uh, you know, shell racks and everything, my qualifications on my crew members in the last episode. You know, uh, some people say that... <laughs> some people like to argue that it's pay to win because of how experienced your crews can get by accelerated training. And, you know, I agree, you do get a lot of benefits from... Uh, accelerated training, but in no regards what I say is pay to win. Okay, you could say I'm biased because I oh look look here's the guy with all this money and all <laughs> this highly trained crew saying it's not pay to win. No, but honestly, from a non-biased uh, you know point of view, uh, after being able to experience having an untrained crew and a trained crew, the only one that makes a huge difference, and I'm gonna list the top three. Um, is here, okay? Reload speed is very important, uh, very, very important. Having that maxed is something you'll need to get straight away. Uh, reload speed is always important. Um, second off, actually, I'm, the, the second and third is probably a tie for me. It's G tolerance and vitality. G tolerance so that you're not blacking out all the time because blacking out really affects how how, how e easy you can see your targets when you're coming out of these high G maneuvers, which is so easy to do in, in uh, 
arcade battles because you know there's no law of physics that apply like in historical battles where your rings wings rip off and that penalizes you you're, you're feeling uh, high G's almost all the time in arcade battles, so this makes quite a big difference. Vitality, so that your uh, pilot doesn't get shot out instantly. And, and those are the top three that I would say. You know, keen vision vi and visibility, I guess they're useful, but, you know, you're going to be seen anyway eventually. You're going to see your opponent eventually. Uh, stamina, I I'm not sure as to how much this actually affects your pilot okay I, I'm, I'm not sure and i haven't found any sources that speak about it in, de in depth um but what it's supposed to do is that it doesn't it it, it basically does it over time your pilot becomes more useless and the higher level that is the less useless he becomes over time essentially that's what it is uh I, I, but again, like I don't know how how much that effect is, and so that's why I haven't put it on my list. It still probably is important, but it's not on my list because I don't know exactly how how effective it is. So we have our th level eight planes over here. What we're gonna do is jump on into some arcade battles. Oh, oh, invite squad Entac and Baron von Blitz. Hello, interesting. Maybe I could have invited them. Didn't know that they were online. I thought Baron was on vacation or something. Oh, well, he's probably back. Uh. Okay, Rice Terraces, here we go. So, Rice Terraces as a map, uh, it's it's not my most favorite one. I used to really, really like it back in the day, but ever since they added, you know, different maps to the game, um, I've become fond of other ones. But Rice Terraces is okay. I'll, I'll play on it, no problem. I'll play on any map, to be fair, but... Uh, generally speaking, what happens on this map is that you have two divisions. You have people going down along the left-hand side, you have people going down along the right-hand side. Uh, what you want to do is probably stay on one of the sides, and as soon as one side is empty, you'll want to move on to the other side. Just like any other map, essentially. I'm saying some sort of generic stuff right now. But, okay, what I do at the beginning of every single match is I fly straight up into the air. And now I'm going to start commentating literally everything that's going through my head. So I'm going to take a look at what the enemies have. Again, looking at the distribution of the enemies, I see that there's quite a few fighters in the sky. One or two bombers, some attackers. But overall, it looks like it's going to be a battle between mostly... Yeah, it looks like it's going to be a battle between mostly fighters and such. Some fighters have bombs and whatnot... And uh, Yak 90s are especially good at hunting down bombers, but eh, there's not a whole lot. So after gaining quite a bit of altitude here, I'm going to fall down on my first opponents. Usually I like to actually get some uh, bombers, but since none are nearby, uh, I'm not going to bother at the moment. Here we go. We've got a Corsair. Didn't really track him too well there. Only last minute that I've actually seen him. But look, we turned around behind him. QNS shot him out instantly. Yak 9 troll. And that is exactly why I called the Yak-9 troll. It's so freaking trollish. So there's a plane below me. All I'm doing is going to start falling down on top of him, using as much speed to actually catch up to him. These Kai-49s, if you don't have the speed, uh, you won't be able to catch up to him. So I'm making sure that I'm using all my WEP as possible, using my height advantage to gain as much speed. Still using that uh, shift occasionally every now and then. And here we go, unleashing, leading this target. He has overtaken me, putting on my landing flap or my uh, combat flaps so with F, using the S and Q and a little bit of uh, counteracting to find him, using the mini map to generally find the direction that he's gone in. And leading this target now, hit him a few times. Oh, God's sake. There we go. That's exactly what I needed. So using my Q. Uh, and E, or sorry, S and E there, uh, and a bit of counteracting for my A, my engine is taken, actually cut out now because I was using my WEP a little bit too fast. So two kills at the moment, uh, three from one of my teammates, which is pretty cool. Gonna hunt down this A20G, so putting down my combat flaps, gonna turn upside down. Oh, no. Okay, I thought he was gonna start flying towards my direction because I like to lead them a little bit. Uh, sometimes because if I turned upside down like that and he started coming past me all I'd have to do is an upside down loop and then continue on the trail with him but he ended up actually flying away from me so it didn't apply so now I'm gonna keep on flying up into the sky take a look and survey uh, what the enemy is doing there's a few a lot of uh, fighters so all I'm gonna do is play the cautious opponent uh, I'm not gonna you know just get up in there and, and and just ask for a death sentence. That, that is asking for a death sentence if you just get down in there. All I'm gonna do is try to look for stragglers, okay? Uh, I forgot to turn on my raised flaps. Always use raised flaps in 
straight ons, combat flaps, and turns. And again, I'm just going to be playing as a cautious pilot here, just hovering over. P39 is flying away from me. If he starts turning, then I'll go for him. Again, I'm going to just look around, take a look. I see this G4M1, which is a bomber. He's starting to come in. This is the type of prey that I'm looking for. Also, that JU87, that's from, coming from the side. I'm going to go for the G4M1 first because he's a bigger target. Uh, and also, he's closer to me. And again, leading all these attacks. Instantly gone like that. Put on my combat flaps, just going back up into the sky using my rudder. I'm almost using my rudder on every single uh, approach here. And that is the bullfighter gone. That's the Yak-9 troll for you guys. This is why I'm a little bit iffy about using it. I got somebody on me, so all I'm gonna do... Oh, he got me. He got me. Oh, man. I don't want to make up excuses right now. But I've actually got uh, earphones. I don't have my proper headphones in at the moment. I've got my earphones. Uh, just one in my ear. Because if I have two earphones in, I can't actually hear myself speaking. So it sounds a bit weird, but that's what happens with earphones. Um, and I didn't, I didn't hear hear that attack coming. Uh, it was too late. But again, another thing that I should have done was uh, as soon as you you're done killing someone, take a look at that t uh, mini map in the top right corner. Okay, you see that mini map in top right? Look for any red targets directly behind you. I see a Ju87 over here, which is all by himself, completely defenseless, essentially. Uh, and I'm going to go for him. I see IL-2s over there as well, but I'm thinking about my ground targets first. So I'm going to go kill the JU-87. Uh, putting down, not using any WEP now because uh, I, I'm perfectly behind him. I don't want to overshoot him. Taking a look at my mini-map, there's nothing there. And I'm going to continue on heading on this direction. I'm going to reload. My reload is fast because I've upgraded my... Plink uh, crew completely on my reload. Otherwise, I might be more reluctant about reloading. Uh, so I see another JU-87 who's just been shot out of the sky. Lots and lots of bombers right now. This is where it becomes a little bit interesting who I should go for. I like to go for the stragglers at the back. That way, if I go for the ones at the back, then I can kill the ones over here who are behind our lines still. So I'll kill this uh, IL-2 over here, lead these shots a bit. I've hit him, hit him, hit him, combat flaps. And critical on his tail, he's going to crash into the ground eventually. I'm just going to let him go. Uh, no point of going for him. And now I'm going to lead on this bull fort. Did a bit of a, a roll there. Uh, he's dead. And I think I got that aisle too as well. Uh, so I think that was two that died at the same time. Now I'm going to lead onto this P39Q, which is uh, essentially like the same thing like me. Oh! Okay, that's my fault. Wow, a bull fort got the kill. Okay. Uh, that's interesting. What happened there was another mistake of mine. So, yes, I guess I can make mistakes. Uh, what happened there was I shouldn't have done... I shouldn't have done an upside-down loop at that low altitude. You have to know which planes you're using. Uh, certain planes, like if you're using a Japanese plane, could easily have done that loop. Era Cobra can't, okay? It's a bit of a sluggish fighter. So you have to know the limitations of your planes. And if, if, if you... Eventually, you'll get an idea if if they will be able to uh, do something like that, like another under uh, loop. Okay, so I see a, a Ryzen that wants to uh, dogfight me here, which is interesting. Uh, I'm tempted to come for him, even though he has a little bit of an advantage. Ah, uh, man. In terms of a turn fight, and I, all I'm really, really hoping for right now is my teammates to come help me. So I'm going to call for help. It's just not coming. Oh, that's not even calling for help, Krebs. <laughs> that's saying affirmative. Yeah, those, uh... Those, uh... And that's exactly why I think the Zeros can be some of the deadliest planes in the in, in, in the whole game. Uh, if you don't have the speed to get away, like, I, didn't, I definitely didn't have the speed to get away. Um, that's it. Uh, that's it, if, if it's in the right hand. So, I'll take a look at the uh, leaderboard, and I see that zero that just killed me he's leading okay their team three to zero and i see that he's just down here and now what i'm gonna do is specifically go for him my bf 109 is an exact same trap as me uh so i'm gonna just try to help him here i guess the nice thing you could say about those uh zeros is that they die very quick uh you know it's the pros and cons shit spitfire oh just trying to lose him here combat flaps engaged I'm lucky I've got a 
Oh, what's go going on? Uh, <laughs> yes, dog fighting an, an attacker, best idea. Uh, luckily, uh, I'm in IL-2, which is actually a very maneuverable plane. Um, but it's still, I don't think, a match for Spitfire over here. And unfortunately, I'm just caught out. I'm way too caught out. Yeah. That's my control system's gone. So maybe I can get a kill here if I go in a straight line. I'll try going. I'll go for it. I'm gonna die here, without a doubt. But I'm just gonna see if I can take him down with me. Oh, well, it's a kill assist. Whatever. Move on. You know, sometimes you do get yourself in these awkward positions where it's kind of hard to come out of them. I've already lost four planes, so not the best of games so far, but I've got uh, a number of kills. I'll go out into my Yak-1B next. Okay, for some reason I don't have my stealth ammo selected on here. There we go. Quickly selected it. Now we're going to engage again. I see a Yak or a lag uh, directly beneath me. I'm not going to go for him. I'm taking a look at up at the top. To, uh, seeing how many ground targets we have left and now I see an F6F and a Kai 49 I'm gonna go for this F6F first because he's the closest target to me and the Kai 49 I could meet him uh, just as I finish off this F6F so I'm gonna pull off this engagement this head-on I've taken a little bit of damage here and now the Kai 49 is actually flying away from me uh, but still I'm gonna head in that direction because he's all by himself and FRU is going for him and FRU might actually get him uh, but so uh, the, the way I like to think about it is don't trust your teammates as much as much as you want to sometimes don't trust your teammates because I might not be able to get the kills try to get it by yourself so using my S and E right now uh, to come on top of this gentleman and here we go got my straight flaps or my raised flaps and he's that's a kill assist and now I'm just gonna reload get back on into the sky nobody's behind me there's a P-47 coming, so I'm going to gain a build altitude, start flying towards the direction of my base, because that's obviously the safest place to go at the moment. We're low on ground targets. Right, I'm going to go for this P-47, because he's going to have a few bombs on him. He's basically uh, a fighter with a, a crap load of bombs. Uh, look, you can see those tracer bullets starting to come at me. I'm just going to confuse him. And now if he tries to engage me in a, co in a turn fight, it's just not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Um, okay, yeah, got him, whatever. Uh, <laughs> if I kept that fight going, I would have won that, because P-47 is not a maneuverable plane at all. So now there's an IL-2 leading again, and it's a collision. Uh, some people, they get so caught up in just the fact that they might get a kill, that they just say, screw it, I'm not gonna break off, you know, uh, and whatever. He might actually be raging right now to himself, he might be like, oh, Oh, blah, 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 a puta, puta madre, the guy just rammed me. But, as a lot of people like to say, I actually like what this uh, saying is, I, I heard it somewhere, and a lot of people say it nowadays, is it takes two people to, uh, for a ram, okay? Uh, sometimes, it's, it's, it's better to not look at yourself. Um, uh, you, uh, sometimes it's better to actually look at yourself, sorry. Uh, and not the and not the enemy. Look at both of you. I mean, it takes two people for ram. Uh, where did you go wrong? How did you let that ram happen? Okay. So getting back into the sky here, my teammate here, uh, my teammate in that Yak 9T uh, is one for eight. So in terms of actual, you know, numbers kill ratio, he's doing better than me. So it's competition. Competition is healthy. B25 have to go for him right now. We actually won. We won. Congratulations. There we go. Uh, I thought we were actually going to lose that. I thought that B-25 would have gone in and finished it off. But luckily for us, it didn't happen. Uh, so that is that is one game. Doing alright. It's it's 8 kills. Uh, I'm not really happy with the ratio more so. If I got 8 for 1, I I guess I'd be happy. But the the ratio will do. Apparently got air resistance for my IL-2M. So that thing wasn't even fully upgraded yet. That's, that's weird. I thought that was fully upgraded by now. Uh, oh, hello. I have even some other... Cool! Increase my horsepower. Nice. Do I have that on my IL-2 as well? Yeah, see, I, I guess the lesson is, is make sure that all of your uh, planes are fully loaded out. Uh, fully upgraded. Or possible because, you know, there's no harm. There's no harm. Uh, I think in the new patch server, 1.33... 
they're going to allow like a huge amount of customization and i've seen the pictures like a huge amount of upgrading on planes which is awesome i'm gonna have to do a video on that as soon as possible so we did the ussr we're gonna leave them now and we're gonna jump out into some other planes so what what have we not flown out with i can't remember what planes we did last time i think we did the brits and the germans so what we'll do now is the japanese okay because a lot of people hate the japanese and I think I think it's a myth in a way. You know, people say Japanese suck. I, I, I'm I'm keen to say it's a myth. You saw that arcade guy, okay? You saw how well he was doing. If it wasn't for me, uh, he would have lived. And if I was actually in his plane, that Raisin, that Zero, uh, I I th I'd, I'd still have lived, okay? Um, because where he went wrong was that he should have seen me coming down on top of him. And he should have started diving and getting out of the way of me so that I didn't have a clear target on him. And then he could start engaging both me and the BF-109 or whatever he was chasing. Sorry about that, guys. I'm going to have to do that game again. And it's actually not one game, but actually multiple ones. Uh, I, I, I keep on getting in disconnections, uh, network issues. And, and it's because of my, my network cable on, on this computer. It keeps on falling out by itself. It's like it doesn't have that clip that makes it stay in the computer. Uh, so it just keeps on falling out by itself. Uh, so what I've done is the 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 very most manliest way of d uh, d uh, <laughs> DIY. I've taped it to the back of my computer, and if that does not hold it, I'm going to mash it with my my fist until it gets in there. Because <laughs> I'm not kidding, this is like the fifth or sixth time now that I'm actually doing this again. Um, but, okay, right, let's let's start again, and I hope this time will work. Uh, we're going to be doing the Japanese planes, and I can't remember what I was explaining in the other part of the video. But generally speaking, the Japanese have pros and cons. They're good dogfighters, but they die very fast, and when it comes to certain maps that I like to play on with the Japanese, I like to play on maps with a lot of cover, so mountains. You could say Rice Terrace has a lot of mountains, and that'd be a great map, but I don't find that it's a good one for this map. That's because there are valleys which make it uh, more... I mean, you can you can use the mountains to your cover if they are around you. Uh, a lot of times there will be engagements, and a lot of times where I am on the map is I'm in the valleys, and that tends to be more open air battles. And that can be a bit bad for Japanese planes, because they die so fast. If the opponents are smart, they can <clears throat> quickly uh, make quick work out of Japanese planes in open air battles. Whereas, if it's maps like, say, Pacific Hidden Base, uh, Fjords, any map with a lot of cover, you can use that ma those mountains and whatnot to just hug around them, um, and use them to outmaneuver your opponent. So I'm going to take a quick look at the teams. And I see on the enemy team there is a lot of fighters and hardly any bombers. Alright, so... I guess what we're going to do... Is I don't know who to go for. There are a lot of planes. I'm actually tempted to just suss out the situation. Uh, <laughs> suss out the situation a bit more. But uh, to be fair, I'm going to go for this Donier. I'm going to go for a Donier. And he's coming straight at me, and you can see that there is a whole bunch of, uh, what do you call it? The hell is that? He's coming in really slow. I thought he would be going faster than that. I thought I was, like, lagging again or something. I thought my game was just gonna disconnect. Cause that's what kept on happening. My game was disconnecting and planes were just float on around. Uh, but okay. Looks like we're fine. Uh, Donier, just gonna keep on going for him. He's lost heel control. Uh, are there any fighters around me? No, there are not. I'm gonna pull off him, and he's gone. Alright, so I went for him because he was the closest target to me, and what I generally like doing with opponents is I'll let- If I'm doing a head-on with opponent, I want to make sure that I at least have, you know, a few kilometers of space. If I see that we're coming at each other, as soon as I hit one kilometer away, exactly one kilometer, I start shooting at them where I anticipate them to be, and then at around- as soon as I start seeing their tracers, or at around 700 meters, so, you know, a very small time period that you, you can imagine, you're coming at each other so fast, I'll break off, okay? I get out a few shots, hopefully they take some of those shots, maybe I'll even kill them sometimes, and then I'll just break off of them. I'm gonna go for this Kai-49, because he's all by himself, he's being chased by a few guys, turning on the side, gonna make him an easy kill for me, uh, got his gunner instead, 
was hoping for a pilot kill, <laughs> that would have been better. So turning around with my combat flaps, and a little bit of Q and S, at, or, oop, I see somebody, with, ooh, a bit of uh, E and S action. Thought that was an enemy shooting me from the side. Actually, is it? It actually was. It was. I thought I was a teammate there for a second. Um, okay, right. Just to ignore that, let them be. Oh my god. Wow, where the hell did he come from? Did not see him coming. Did not see him coming. Uh, what I'd like to say is every time you have finished off an engagement, check your minimap and round you with the C button. Uh, because these situations are just changing all the time. Uh, you, you don't know who's going to be around you, beside you. You know, they can just sneak out. Man, I just did all the damage to that guy. <laughs> okay, whatever. Hemi 410 gets the kill. Uh, and now I'm going to go for this P63, uh, which is going to be coming at me. And see, I see those tracers come in, and I'm just going to confuse him to hell. Alright, so I wonder if he's going to start turning here. It looked like he was going to start doing it, but he gave up on that idea. So... <clears throat> You guys saw it perfectly well there. I got my shots off at around a kilometer. Uh, and then when, as soon as I started seeing those tracers, I broke off. Okay? The moment you see those tracers, those little colors, and it's, it's harder if they have stealth ammo, but the moment you see those little colors coming at you, that's when you break off because they're going to be reaching you really, really shortly. Those things travel fast, all right? Even, even if they're 37 millimeters. Oh my gosh. Wow. These planes just coming out of nowhere getting lost in these conversations with you guys. I'm not even becoming aware of the enemies around me. Alright, so we'll focus a little bit more on what's happening. So we're one-to-one -one at the moment, which isn't great. Uh, I'll go out in my A6M3. To be fair, that A6M3 Mod 22 was kind of a bit damaged. So, you know, generally speaking, when planes get damaged, I'm kind of happy for them to die. Because <laughs> I like having my planes in perfect working order. Uh, and, and a lot of times what happens is that people like to uh, use their repair abilities and, and, and you know, go on an airfield as soon as their plane is damaged. But uh, to be honest, I don't bother. Um, I've got a premium account and, you know, generally speaking, if you have a premium account, you should be making enough money uh, that you can easily cover repair costs, all right? So Harry Sausage says, yeah, I got Krebs, so he probably recognizes me. He knows who I am. So I'm going to be careful of him, because he might actually be intentionally coming for me. Okay, so luckily for me, that that engagement was changing very, very fast there. Uh, that Corsair was flying straight at me. Or actually, not directly at me, but then he was, then he started to. Uh, at the very last second, that could have been deadly. Luckily, I broke off his wing before anything was going to happen. So I'm going to keep on doing these spins, uh, rolls, to follow this, my opponent here. Still looking at the tactical map in the top right, the mini map. And he's just swaying from side to side. There we go. Nice and easy. And I see somebody's directly behind. But I'm still turning. Oh god, oh god, oh god, no! No Krebs! Can we suss out the fire? No, that's a permanent fire. I don't think that one's coming out. I'm sure my guy's burning there. Oh my god, are we still flying? We're still flying, holy crap. Okay, my 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 own fan is purposely coming for me. I think. Wow, we broke out the fire. Uh, I I didn't think that was gonna work. I was gonna be like, maybe there's probably no point of telling those telling these guys how I did it. But uh, what you do is you pull back your throttle, uh, and you start losing altitude straight away. Okay, you start using you start gaining speed uh, straight away so that you can try and break out that fire. It it can freaking work on a Japanese plane. You just seen it right there in front of you. Okay, so I don't see any uh, hairy sausage around me, which is good because it looked like he was almost coming for me. And there we go. That's the target that I needed. So, just leading all my targets with my mouse. I'm not even using. I'm not even using my uh, control schemes at the moment. I'm just using my mouse sometimes when I'm just leading my targets. The only time I use my keyboard is when I need to make sharp turns. I'm gonna go for a Spitfire just directly above. So that was my mouse. Now I'm using my S and E to turn because that was a sharp turn. The mouse can't handle all of it. And there we go, we got the kill. And now I see that there's a whole bunch of enemies. 
this is where I could die just very, very soon because it comes almost in waves. You kill a bunch of enemies and then they have to load out their next plane and then they all come, a whole bunch of them. And so the situation can be very lethal very fast. So I'm looking in the t Yep, I see somebody behind me. Man, I'm smoking, but nobody's really coming after me. I still got four minutes of fuel. There we go, just in that belly. In that nice little belly of his. Oh god, have to be careful. Watch out. Ooh, just trying to dodge out my enemies there. Gonna do a little bit of a roll, come down for this, uh, some goof guyfer over here. Uh, Jared. Man, I can't even tell if, like, my game is gonna disconnect here or if I don't, I don't know. Sometimes it looks like it, doesn't it? Oh my gosh! No! Bad network connection, piss off! Uh, the tape didn't work! <laughs> that is so anticlimactic, man. That was my freaking network connection. I'm sorry, guys. Like, I'm gonna have to figure this freaking thing out. I don't know what it is. Um, yeah, you saw me jumping across the screen there. So I, I, I quickly went to the back of my computer, uh, pushed it in. I'm hoping it'll stay there a little bit. And uh, looking at the enemy team, almost all of them are gone. Wow. I guess they were just getting beaten up so bad that near enough almost all of them left. Uh, Harry Sausage really, really wanted to kill me there. Hmm. Uh, it's not necessarily that almost all of them left. You can see a number of them are out of their planes, but... I, 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 to be honest with you, I don't know exactly... Krebs not in the talking movie, he's flying a plane. Because <laughs> I'm actually casting a game. And I have to deal with uh, a network cable that wants to spontaneously go out of its uh, slot. Which is a bit annoying. Damn it! Got seven kills. That's frustrating. I think we could have gotten more if I didn't disconnect there. Yeah. Well, that's, that's exactly what was happening uh, in every single other video that I was doing. Uh, so, so yeah. But uh, anyway, that, that shows off the Japanese a little bit. They can be a lot of fun. That game ended very, very soon. And I think it's because their team was getting kind of demolished, okay? Uh, I don't like games where an enemy team gets demolished. I like the games that drag out the full 25 minutes. Uh, because that's how you get the most number of kills, alright? That's how you get to the 20 plus kill club. Um, so, so yeah. Prefer those longer ones. But, uh, oh god. That's what she said. I know what you guys are thinking. But anyway, guys. I think we'll end it on that note. And now I'm going to have to figure out how I'm going to process this video on Adobe Premiere on a new computer. So... Uh, once you see this, I've, I've been successful, obviously, but, uh, yeah, I hope you found this, guys, uh, I hope you found it informative. If you want me to do more, I will do more. If you want me to focus on any topics, whether it's the turning, any individual planes, any individual factions, just let me know, and I'll, uh, try to do something. Alright, guys, I hope you enjoyed this, and until the next one, this is Krabs and Pooh, and I'll catch you all later.